the optimal life is unoptimized. You know, these last couple of days, I've been doing a bunch of things that in theory, you'd think are useless because I haven't been sat down on my desk and writing all the time or producing videos or talking to a bunch of people as much as I've been in other times. But the thing is, I was thinking about, have you ever looked at the day to day or the agenda or the calendar of the geniuses from the past of a Mozart, of an Einstein, of a Tesla, of all of those guys that we admire from the past guys and girls, of course. And if you look at them, they barely worked at all. They had one block of deep work usually, or sometimes they separated it into two blocks, but they did a lot of random things. They went on walks, they did some kind of sport. They went out to drink with their friends a lot. Many of them had soirees every night. And when we think of it, we have this hustle culture mentality sometimes, especially on the money internet side of things like money, Twitter and other social media. We think about the hustle and bustle and being productive all the time. But the thing is to do actual meaningful work, you can't be on all the time. Of course you have times in which you have to put in more work naturally, but at the same time, you can't do this all the time unless you're doing grunt work or unless you're doing things that don't require much of your creativity, of your mental capacity. But if you're doing something new, if you're trying to invent things, you need to let your mind wander. You need to allow space so that your subconscious can give you the answers because at the end of the day, and this is something that the people from the past mastered, but we sort of forgot about it after the industrial revolution. At the end of the day, it's not about how many hours you spend doing things. It's not about the total input you put in terms of men hours, in terms of effort. It's about how you use systems, how you use leverage, how you let yourself have those good ideas. And the thing is, and this book that many people it, tell us to read, and it's actually really is truly very good. Psycho cybernetics talks about this in detail. And it's something that I had thought about a lot before as well. And especially if you guys believe in Myers-Briggs personality testing and don't think it's just basically a new kind of modern horoscope, but my type is INTJ. So basically my main way of thinking is by using my subconscious mind or my, you know, letting the subconscious do the heavy work that comes out natural to me. So usually I'll read a lot, I'll study a lot, I'll have a infinite amount of information, like, of course, not liter literally, but figuratively, but whatever. I'll binge a bunch of videos, a bunch of books, a bunch of courses, I'll, and then I need to give myself some time to do something else. So to go to the gym, to go on a walk, to read about something that has nothing to do, to spend some time with some friends, have a, a coffee with a good friend of mine or something like that. And eventually when you do this, you let your subconscious pick up on that information that you had fed your conscious mind and it will blurt out the answer. That's why many times when you allow yourself to do something menial, like taking a shower or washing the dishes or some other type of work that you don't really think about it. You just do it. You 
or even with exercise in which you are tiring your body, but at the same time, you're not really thinking about it. You're just focusing on lifting the weight or on the running or on the swimming. And you're not really thinking about things consciously. And then when we do that, we allow our subconscious to do its work and it will give us the best of answers. That's also the reason why some of those guys from the past, they would, many of the, their best ideas came in dreams, for example, because when we're dreaming is the time when we totally switch off our conscious mind and we let our subconscious do all of the work. And even some of them would go to bigger lengths to do this. So for instance, I think it was Dali that did this. He would fall asleep at his desk or at his chair like this. He would kind of fall asleep, but he'd have a metal ball on his hand and he'd leave underneath the desk or like underneath his hand, he'd leave like a pan, like a, a frying pan, something like that. So when he was falling asleep and he ended up like stopping clutching the ball and letting the ball fall down, he'd wake up because of the noise of the, of the ball falling onto the pan. So he would be in that state in which you're not really asleep and you're not really awake. And in that state, he'd be able to have those surreal images and he'd be able to think about them. And then that's what he would paint. But also other guys did this as well. Edison is famous for doing this. His wife famously said that most of his best ideas came when he took his naps. So this is a reminder that we shouldn't think about doing things consciously all the time and being just like focusing on looking at the screen all the time and being typing voraciously. Like life is not one of those movies in which they ask a hacker to come by and he's typing super fast and in five seconds he breaks into the Russian super secret, top secret service, army, whatever. Life's not like that. In real life, you need to learn things consciously so that you can do them subconsciously later. And doing things subconsciously is actually much easier, much more, much more efficient. And it also has to do with things. I think it was Dali as well that said that you need to learn all the rules so that you can learn how to break them as an artist. So you learn as a professional and then you break the rules as an artist. So if you go to some of the biggest writers in history, like the Hemingways of the world, or in Portuguese, we have Guimarães Rosa, for example, that would break all of the grammar rules in Portuguese, but he was a genius and he knew exactly what he was doing. So the way he did it was genius, but you can't teach kids in school to do that because they're not Guimarães Rosa, they're just learning. They're in the beginning stages. So you need to teach them how to do it by the book, by the rules. And then later on, after they've perfected it, when they grow up, if they're very good with their language skills, with their writing, then they can start experimenting and then they can start playing around with the rules and just forgetting about the rules altogether. But let's say if you're learning how to drive and you don't try to learn by the rule book, you don't try to learn the way that your instructor will tell you to learn, like he will tell you what to do step by step. And afterwards, when you become a true driver, when you start driving every day, you will pick up things subconsciously and eventually you won't even really think when you're driving, which might be a bit dangerous. And please pay attention to the road ahead of you. And especially when you're changing lanes, please pay attention in these moments. It's very easy for us to forget to do things like to turn on the turn signal. So please don't do that. 
it's always good to have a little bit of that attention to use in these cases. But anyways, I started talking about how, how I was doing things that in theory weren't productive and I didn't even talk about which things. But for instance, on Monday, my mom asked if I wanted to go to her, with her to the mall and she asked me at lunchtime and I thought consciously, well, I probably shouldn't because this weekend I did a bunch of things uh, with my family already and I was thinking I didn't really do my things like my work things or my hobby things. And I should probably focus on that work that I had left left behind. But then I thought, no, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's have different memories. Let's because at the end of the day, what's the point of just running around in circles? And if we don't allow ourselves to do things that are different from the norm, sometimes yesterday evening. After I got from the gym, my cousin was, he was in my house. And what I was thinking was, well, I'll get home, I'll eat something and take a shower and then record a video or two or write, do those kinds of things. But then he said, you know, my friend and his sister, they have a Beetle, like a Volkswagen Beetle. And they're coming here and they want to take me on a spin. Do you want to come? And my first reaction was to think, no, I don't want to come, man. Like I have my stuff to do, you know, because that's me. I'm that kind of guy. I, I'm consistent and I do things and blah, 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 hustle culture. But then I fought a little bit and I'm, I haven't been seeing this cousin lately much because he's living in another city and he's pretty much the closest thing that I have to a brother. I have a sister, but a brother, he's the closest thing I have. He's only five years younger than me, and we were raised pretty much together. And it was an offer to do something very different, to ride a, an old school 1973 Volkswagen Beetle. And... I don't even remember the last time I had ridden a Beetle. I think I was a kid when I did it. So you, I said, you know what? Just let's go. Let's do it. And it, it was awesome, man. We had an awesome time. We we went to uh, a bakery, and which is one of my favorite bakeries. And, you know, ate a sandwich, had some coffee, talked a little bit, then came back and he drove the Beetle and, and it was super fun. And it's a moment, it's a memory that I'll probably remember for a long time. And I'll remember, well, perhaps not the, for the rest of my life, but it's something that's in my memory now. But if I just said, no, I'm going to stay home, I'm going to record a video, I'm going to write, you know what? It would be just like dozens of times that I've done exactly that, that I just sat down and wrote and wrote and wrote, or that I sat down and recorded a video or two. And I've done this dozens of times. In in a sense, it wouldn't be special. So I wouldn't actually remember it in terms of memory. So when you get to the end of your life, the only thing you'll have are those memories of the things that you did that were different. So now we tie back to the beginning that living an optimal life is not optimal in the sense that you're not doing all of the right things, quote unquote, all the time. Because if you were, you would be living a life that's basically the same thing. It's basically that movie Groundhog Day, living the same day, day by day, even if you are privileged to choose what your groundhog day looks like, which is my case in most aspects, thank God. But even then, if you don't allow yourself to let that randomness of times of 
going on a side quest that someone invites you to go on or making up side quests. You know, I have a friend of mine, Ava, that she consciously makes these side quests. And I think it's every Wednesday that like the afternoon she separates so that it's like adventure time. You know, she goes on a, a hike or doing something different. And even if you're watching Ava, I'm still waiting for you to have you on the podcast because the day she was supposed to come in, she said, actually the day before she was like, you know, I think I might have an emergency hiking trip tomorrow. So can we reschedule? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, how can I say no to that? And I'm trying to do this with my life as well. You know, balancing this, that on the one hand, of course, we want to be productive. We want to do things. We want to have a good product or service or put out content so that more people can see it. But at the same time, we want to live the optimal life. And the optimal life is lived by doing things that will make memories. And doing things that make memories are things that are memorable. And memorable means that they are a bit different than the norm. They are things that you're not used to doing. And this is also why when you travel, you remember more. And it's so much it's something that's so much more intense and that you will create those memories. Even if you travel for a week or two to another country, to another place, those are the memories that will stay. And it's the same thing. If we think about what was on the news yesterday or last week or last year, you don't remember most of the things you don't remember, but you will remember some very, important event that happened, like what happened with Trump a month or so ago, or what happened with, you know, those kinds of things you will remember, or maybe if there's a sports team that you like, when they have a good team, when they win it all, or when they almost win it all, that will be etched in your memory for your lifetime. But the things that you do in the day to day, usually they will not. So you have to walk that line between finding a day to day that you enjoy and that you can derive some pleasure from doing it, or at least perhaps not even finding it, but actually having that mindset that sets it in a way that you enjoy those things. But at the same time, you have to do things that are different from the norm. You have to try a different plate that you never ate. You have to go to a different restaurant. You need to read books on things that you never thought about. You need to watch a movie in a language that you don't understand because otherwise you will be back to Groundhog Day. And back to the beginning again, the optimal, my, the optimal life is not optimized. It's not optimal in the sense of industrial revolution of productivity of production. The optimal life is optimal in the sense of purpose, of breath, of experience. So thank you for watching. And I hope you have a nice day and that you think about this and you do something different today. You do something different tomorrow. You try something else. You know, if you always ask for the caramel latte, ask for the strawberry frappuccino as for the blueberry whatever chino you know um drink a white russian you know vodka with milk whatever do something different and if you do something different every day or at least once or twice a week you try out something different your life will be much more memorable you will have more experiences you will have things to talk about too to your friends and overall you'll become a more interesting person. So it's a win, 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 win. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Keep rocking, keep rolling. Peace.